These professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. If I was spending a lot of money, that's the sort of plate I expect. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. That pigeon is cooked to perfection. I couldn't have done any better myself. Cooking doesn't get better than this. Over the past three weeks, this professional competition has produced six great chefs. In today's programme, only two of them will battle it out against each other for one place in the final. In a true test of their skill and commitment, they're travelling across the country to Gidley Park, a restaurant which demands Michelin excellence from anyone who cooks there. I think it's a good achievement to have got this far. It's very exciting to be one step closer to the final three, but I won't be happy in, until I've got that. Getting closer and closer, obviously everyone's getting better and better. Really fantastic opportunity. I uh, yeah, really want to make the most of it today and uh, hope to get through to the final. Today we see them go head to head against each other. At the end of today, one of these guys is out, one of these guys is heading towards the title. Gidley Park has two Michelin stars, one of only 12 restaurants in the country to have such an accolade. Today, Dan and Murray will be cooking in service at this country house hotel set in 45 acres of garden and woodland in Devon. Gidley Park is a destination restaurant. People go there because of the food. They go there because of the ambiance, the service, everything. They pay big money for this experience. I know how focused and committed you have to be to be a chef in a two Michelin star restaurant. is so intense, you can feel the tension. It's tangible. You have to be 100% focused. They will be scrutinized by executive chef Michael Keynes, who's held two Michelin stars since 1999, and at the time was the youngest chef to be awarded such an honor. Four minutes to start the dressing two. Michael Keynes is such a fantastic chef. He is a perfectionist. Nothing leaves that kitchen without him making sure it is 100%. Gentlemen, hello, welcome to Gilly Park's Kitchen. At lunchtime, we've got a fully booked lunch to some of our regular clients. The standard that I expect you to cook is equal to what we do every day. And if it's not good enough, I'll be sending it back, OK? Michelin inspectors are anonymous and could visit the restaurant at any time, so it's essential that Dan and Murray don't let standards slip. We're taking an element of risk by having these two people in our business. Clearly, you know, we can't compromise on what we're doing. We can't suddenly start apologising to our guests that, oh, I'm sorry today, you know, we, we've got these two unknowns in our kitchen. So I'm expecting a good performance from them to enhance my reputation, not to step it one step back. It's going to be a dream to work in this kitchen. It's two Michelin starred, it's just basically fantastic food and it's just going to be amazing. Murray's responsible for pan-fried sea bream with Thai puree, stir-fried mushrooms, pak choy, fresh noodles and a lemongrass foam. With that one dish in its entirety, you'll be able to serve here, so make sure you've got everything ready. Yeah. Murray has natural talent in abundance. That guy is a proper, proper chef. And I think his food, flavour-wise, is absolutely sublime. It's wonderful. It's so beautifully loose textured. And it's, it melts in your mouth. It's, it's, it's very, very, very superior. I would gladly eat a plateful. In fact, no, I would eat two platefuls. But sometimes his understanding of finesse and his understanding of perfection went awry. 
couple of days on raw. Let me shake it. Wow. That Mate. is a raw scallop. Little mistakes creep into his food, and they can't be mistakes at the level that we are aiming for, that he is supposed to be aiming for. Working in the two-star restaurant is kind of daunting. Michael's hugely respected throughout the industry. A lot of chefs look up to him. There's a lot riding on this now, and I really, really want to go through to the finals. Uh, it would just be one step closer to a dream, really. Dan will be making saddle of lamb with fondant potato, onion and thyme puree, tomato fondue, and a tapenade jus. Careful, don't crack it. It's about 15 quid a plate. Coming to a two-star could be slightly intimidating. It's a new experience working at this level, so it's a great opportunity to really rise up and show Michael my ability. I'm here to, here to win. Dan, I think, is an exceptional cook. He's driven, he's focused. The guy understands flavours. I think he does sublime food. I would say it's so near to being perfect that I would seriously look at serving that in my restaurant. <coughs> I'd buy a dozen. If I was served this in a Michelin restaurant, I'd be, I'd be happy. He's done a really good job. I must say, the risotto that he cooked for us was an absolute piece of genius. He is a good chef, but he needs to up the game even more and look at his presentation. Far too much garnish underneath it. It looks wrong. To be fair to Dan, he has learnt a lot about presentation, but now we need consistency. Every plate has to be perfect. You can't put any slip up today. You've got to do the best you can do. Any one of us is going to be going through today, and uh, you know, I definitely hope that's going to be me. The guests are beginning to arrive. Diners travel from all over the country to eat here, and with waiting lists often months in advance, expectations are high. Check on two covers, two lamb. Yeah, That's you then, two lamb on straight away, medium rare. Sure. You know what you're doing there, chef? Come on, let's go. Off you go. Although presentation is Dan's weakness, at two star level, there's no room for error. Always looks easier, doesn't it, than it is? Quick. Well, I'll show you again, yeah. watch. Take it off the spoon that way. Right, off you go. Okay, good. Get me the spinach. Don't Where's stand. Chef? Hey, listen, come on. Sorry. Take it the next one. Spinach is not even ready, so what? That's no good, is it? Yeah. Dan, think and make sure you've got everything on. Come on, boys, don't let me down on spinach there. Come on. Dan, where is it? OK, that's good. Good cooking. Well done. Let's keep it up. See if we can keep that pressure on. We should. I'll start plating without the rest of the garnish ready to go, so... No, make sure it's all ready next time. Dan, good news. The first two on the lamb, so it's fantastic. We should. Thanks, sure. Got a compliment back from the restaurant saying the lamb was very good. It's partly down to my cooking, hopefully, and uh, obviously it's my dish, yeah. yeah, going well. Check on. Three lamb. We should. We're saying a lot of meat at the moment. Main course, four lamb. Behind chef. The orders keep coming for Dan's lamb, but Murray's still waiting for his first fish order. One bream, one lamb, one risotto. What did I just say? Hello, gentlemen. We chef. Don't just say we for the sake of saying we. Say it because you heard me. When Murray finally gets an order, he's feeling the pressure to impress Michael. 35 minutes into service and I've only got one fish on check so far, so I've got to make that one, one thing I've got to do absolutely perfect. Bream up, two minutes. Let's start to dress the bream then. Yes, chef. Let's go, boys, quickly. A bit of choy on top. Chef. Where's the choy? It's not done, Chef. Hey, Chef. Pat choy, first thing to do, and what chef. have you forgotten? Come on. Hey, 
first table, you've, you know, you've forgotten something, chef. Had all that time to think about it, okay? Sorry, I was under. Okay, while well, this plate's getting cold, huh, in the meantime. Thanks, Green, please, green. Come on, let's go then, please, quickly. Bring up. Be behind, yeah. Hey, thank you. Next time. Yes, sir. Think, 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 yes, think. Away now, then. Three lamb, one bit or two. We oui, chef. One sea bring. Ten minutes on the path. Yeah. 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 With service more than halfway through, Dan and Murray need to get their next orders out together. Yeah. Right, now listen up. Wait, chef. His dish and your three dishes, same time on the pass. Chef. OK, Chef? Don't forget anything this time, please. I'm being a yeah. all day, otherwise. After not having all his side dishes ready last time, can Dan now focus and get all his lamb out on time? All right, that's good, excellent. Same again next time. Quite a lot of pressure at the moment, but I've got to make sure they're perfect. And uh, make up for the mistake on the last check. I want one seat breathe up in five minutes now. Yes, yeah? Chef. Hang on. Oh, hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. Chef, I mean, it's a mess, isn't it, you know? This is meant to be down this end, isn't it? Take it off, let's start again. I'm looking for the nest. Murray's made such a mess of plating the dish, it needs to be redone. But Dan's lamb is ready to go. Yes, good, lovely, OK. How long for the break? Uh, it's fine, 10 yeah, seconds, Chef. A, well, 10 seconds is not now, is it? I've got two main courses on the pad. Everything's waiting for you on that green. Come on. Finally, Murray's dish is perfect and goes out. If we had to dress that twice, it would have taken a lot less time to dress it once perfectly. Yes, Away, chef. table seven, please. That's it, guys. Service done. Let's get cleaned out. It's my first time working in a two mission style kitchen. So obviously not easy just going into a kitchen and being expected to produce dishes that are of that standard, but you know, I, was, I was happy with my performance today. I don't think Michael thought I did too well, to be honest, but the standards set in the kitchen today were very difficult to live up to. I'm just disappointed that I didn't actually do better. Michael Keynes still has one more test for Dan and Murray. So here we go, here's your menu. OK. Can they recreate his dish to the level of perfection that's made him one of the top chefs in the world and earned him two Michelin stars? The dish is braised turbot and scallops with creamed leeks, wild mushrooms and a chive butter sauce. It's one of the cornerstones of the restaurant's menu. My signature dish is going to test their ability to interpret one of my great classics but understand the balance of what that dish is meant to be. I'm expecting a very, very high level of deliverance. The dish requires skill to braise the turbot to perfection. All the flavours must be balanced so they don't overpower the delicate fish. The seasoning of the chive and butter sauce is crucial to the dish's success or failure. I think I made a pretty good account of myself in service earlier. I think if I do the same this afternoon, show what I can do, I think I've, yeah, I've, I've been happy with my day anyway. I'm a bit disappointed in what I did today. I know I could have done better. Um, I think I'll have to work hard in the next challenge to get through and to impress Michael. Great, thank you, Murray. Looks good. Yeah, it's nice. Looks like the turbot's cooked well. Let's have a look. The seasoning's good, huh? The fish itself is beautifully cooked. Okay. The timing there is fantastic. And your sauce is nicely seasoned too. 
Mm. That's very good. You can be very proud of that. Well done. Thank you. I think the first service let me down by cooking the signature dish. I hope that I did redeem myself. Okay, great. Nice presentation. Let have a look at the fish. A little bland. It's a nice, thick, beautiful piece of turbot. Nicely cooked. But perhaps a little bit more seasoning on the fish when you cooked it. Your sauce is very buttery, and as a result, you can see how it's left on the plate. It doesn't give much to the dish. No chives either. It's a no. chive butter sauce. Yeah. I was disappointed because I know I could have done better, but I'm still happy with my effort. Dad's performance over the whole day was pretty impressive. He's a good worker behind the stove, very adapt to the professional environment at that level. But the signature dish was slightly disappointing. Perhaps concentration when it comes to execution. I think he's, he could be the real deal. Murray, today I think that he struggled to adapt to the high level of cooking. In the service, his fish got in a bit of a pickle. He dressed poorly. I had to start one again. You know, he was troubled by his service more than Dan seemed to be. But he can cook and he showed that with his interpretation of my signature dish. He got it spot on. Dan and Murray now have to take everything they've learnt back to MasterChef HQ. They have just one more chance to fight for a place in the final three. We've now got Dan and Murray going head to head, cooking against each other for winner takes all. Today, one of these guys is going home. To get through today, everything's got to be perfect. Greg and Michelle are looking for a perfect dish today, and I know I've got what it takes. Just got to uh, do it on the day. You know, I'd love to go back home and tell my family that I've won. I definitely really, really want to be in the final three now. This is crunch time. You have one hour only to create an absolutely sublime plate of food. At the end of today, one of you will still be in the competition and one of you will be going home. Let's go. We know these two chefs can cook, but we are looking for something better than that. We are looking for finesse, refinement, beautifully presented food. It has to be perfect. For a place in the final, Dan is creating a dish of squab pigeon with butternut squash puree, morel and girole mushrooms, lardons and squab jus. The pigeon has got to be cooked perfectly pink and vitally important that it's got to be rested. If he doesn't rest it, there's going to be blood and juices running all over the plate and will ruin his sauce. As well as pan roasting the squab breast, he's showing skill by making a confit of the leg and then breadcrumbing it to make use of the whole bird. I'm interested to know, when did you start cooking? Professionally at 16. I went into a kitchen and they offered me a full-time job. And I was doing A-levels at the time and instead of going to uni, and I weighed it up and I thought if I'm going to be a chef, I'm going to really go for it and uh, be the best I can be and aim for the top. Now you work alongside your dad, don't you? Yeah, I'm working alongside him. Uh, he's more behind the scenes and I'm uh, running the uh, kitchen. Has your father got expectations for you in this competition? I'm sure he'd love to see me go on and uh, go on and win it, but um, yeah, it, he wants me to do as well as I can. Are you going to win? I'd like to think so. I'm confident in what I'm cooking, so up to you guys. When I decided I was going to be a chef from the very start, getting mission stars with my ambition. I haven't got to finals week. I've put a lot of effort in to get this far, so I'm not planning on going home early. If I went home today, yeah, I'd be pretty gutted. You're halfway, guys. Half an hour left. 
Murray's hoping to achieve perfection with his dish of roasted halibut, asparagus, leeks and morel mushrooms. The secret to this dish will be cooking the fish to perfection. It's got to be just, just right. To show off different techniques, he's also making a Jerusalem artichoke puree and morel foam. If it's got the intensity of flavour and it's still creamy enough to coat the fish, then it'll work. Try and think back. You remember what it was, the first thing you ever cooked? What, in my life? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, I think it was lasagna, because uh, my mum was working or something, and I just fancied cooking. So I did lasagna at home. So as you never imagined, did you, when you popped that lasagna in the oven, that you might be a professional chef one day? Not a chance, no. No. <laughs> I think I wanted to be an astronaut at the time or something like that, so... <laughs> Are you going to do yourself justice today? I hope so. Well, I hope so, yeah. My tummy's rumbling already. <laughs> I know that my mum's pretty pleased that I've got this far. I don't think she realised that, that I could actually cook. I think she thought I was just a bacon and egg chef. <laughs> so I think she's quite surprised and over the moon that I've come this far. Five minutes. Just five minutes left. That's it. Time's up. Dan is hoping his squab pigeon, butternut squash puree, morel and girol mushrooms, asparagus and squab jus will be perfect. If I start on the visuals, it looks beautiful. Wonderful colours. It looks delicious. Thank you. The skin. It's nicely browned and crispy, and it is pink, but not rare, yet beautifully moist and perfectly seasoned. That pigeon is cooked to perfection. Thank you. I couldn't have done any better myself. You've used the leg of the pigeon there to make like a little beignet. Unfortunately, you've overcooked the breadcrumb as well, and I'm getting a slight carbon bitter taste to it. Your smoked bacon lardons are a little bit rough. They need to be more delicate because that smoked bacon is very strong. It's almost killing the flavour of the pigeon. Oh, yeah. That looks fantastic. If I was out and spending a lot of money, that's the sort of plate I expect. Very, very well done. Oh. Oh. Deep, rich, meaty, soft, moist everything you would expect from a real craftsman in the kitchen. It's stunningly good food. I mean, it's very, very well cooked. Hearing that your dish is almost perfect, it's a shame they didn't say it was perfect, but I'm very happy with what I've done, and I really hope that place in the last three is mine. Murray's last hopes for a final place rest on roasted wild halibut, artichoke puree, green and white asparagus, baby leeks, and morel foam. That is a joy. <laughs> That's an absolute delight. It just falls apart in your mouth. The textures just become one of just gorgeous softness. Oh, yeah, that's special. I'll be back, I reckon, within a couple of days and be ordering it again. Very, very good. That's good to hear. <laughs> that's good. In fact, no, that's very good. Beautifully cooked fish. Thank you. Beautifully seasoned, and the taste of the morel foam and the artichoke puree. It's a marriage made in heaven. Your white asparagus and the baby leeks are undercooked. Crunchiness is not what I was expecting. That is a bit of a letdown. So close to perfection. Very, very close. Yeah. To receive good comments from Greg and Michelle makes me happy about how I did in that round, but the white asparagus and the baby leeks were slightly undercooked. I hope it's not too critical to the whole dish. Crying out loud. 
I mean, how on earth do we separate those two? The skill level of both these young chefs is absolutely mind-blowing. Dan's pigeon with that butternut squash and that sauce was just lovely. I mean, really lovely. It was cooked to perfection. It was moist, it was seasoned properly, the skin browned properly. Dan had slight mistakes in that he, he had the pigeon meat breadcrumbed in a cylinder and that was burnt at places on the outside. And his lardons were too powerful. They were cut too big, a bit too rough, which is a shame because it was a sophisticated, elegant dish. Having come this far, um, I'd, I'd be very upset if I had to go home. Um, put a lot of work into it and I was very happy with what I've done, but sadly both of us got really great comments, but one of us will have to go, and I hope it's not me. Murray certainly knows how to cook fish. I mean, there's no other word for it. It was perfect. It could have been served in any top restaurant anywhere in the world. That, in itself, just the fish, deserved hundreds of stars, let alone one, two or three. And those two sauces, the artichoke and the morel sauce, I mean, that was really gorgeous. It was magical. But then Murray gave us undercooked white asparagus and undercooked baby leeks. Such a shame. I'd feel pretty gutted if I was to go home today. I'd be over the moon to make it through to the next round. I'd, yeah, it would mean a lot to me. It is incredibly difficult to separate these two. Which one of these guys could go on and cope very well in a final? Which one of these guys could be a future star? Both these young chefs have fantastic potential, but we have to choose one. And the chef going through. Is Murray. You said that you'd never been, but all the things that you've seen slowly fade away. My ambitions haven't changed. I want to be a mission star chef, and I'm still as determined as ever to do that. Pretty gutted, to be honest. What I cooked today was basically almost perfection. Just not good enough, I suppose. Yes! I'm really excited. I'm just relieved. I'm just so happy to have made it through. Murray has got that little je ne sais quoi. That's something that tells me that he can achieve greatness. Just over the moon. Seriously, I can't explain how much it, how happy I am. Murray will be back on Thursday. Tomorrow, two more chefs go head-to-head -head in a battle for a place in the final three. I think it's a very safe, very safe dish. But I was just hoping for that little, little bit more, little bit more of something there. Tomorrow morning, Chris Moyles and his team will be live and no doubt getting into some serious trouble in L.A. with former Spice Girl Mel B. Catch the show on 97 to 99 FM and online. Next tonight here on BBC Two, the latest from the Paralympics.